First up, it's no secret that breaking causes wear. That's something that you just can't get away from. However, you can decide what components get worn down. Exactly. With disc brakes, those components are relatively inexpensive as it's the rotors and pads that wear out. But with rim brakes, unfortunately, it's the sidewalls of your rims. Now, it that might not be the end of the world. If you're riding, you know, no mileage really, um, or you're running cheap wheels, but it can definitely get you down if you've invested a lot in a set of very expensive hoops. Yes, indeed. So how long would you expect a set of rims to last? Uh, well, we've done some digging and as always, it depends on a lot of factors. So Shimano's Ben Hillsden says that it's difficult to say because it depends on the force of your braking and the cleanliness of your pads and your rim. He pointed out that if you avoid excessively dragging your brakes and if you clean your bike regularly, paying particular attention to the uh, braking track on the wheels and the face of the brake pad, you'll significantly extend the life of your wheels. I'd better keep on top of my bike cleaning there, yes. shaking my head, it's yeah. not gonna happen. Um, on top of that, you've got the fact that not all rims are the same either. Manufacturers will sometimes use a thin sidewall to reduce weight, and that too will affect longevity. It also makes a difference whether your wheels have carbon or aluminium braking tracks. Ah, uh, well. I found out the other day that steel used to be common but has now been superseded by aluminium and of course carbon uh, because it's lighter and in aluminium's case its coefficient of friction doesn't drop to the same extent as steel when it gets wet. However the aluminium alloys that are uh, relatively soft that are used in uh, rims well, they wear much faster. Well, I'm not really sure. I want steel wheels. They can't no. be great on the hills, which is not good for me. Uh, so how can I actually tell if my rims are wearing out? Oh, so aluminium rims will begin to show some bowing or caving on the alloy brake tracks, but this isn't such a telltale sign on carbon braking surfaces. Well, carbon fibre rims usually have a layer of material laid over the brake track to give a good braking performance, prevent heat buildup, and prolong the life of the rim. Underneath this top layer is the raw carbon weave. According to Hunt Ollie Gray, carbon brake tracks are much more resilient than alloy braking surfaces, and he says that you should look instead for when the woven fibres of the carbon itself begin to become exposed or frayed. So, do you ride in the wet much, Liam? I am guilty of doing the odd session on Zwift instead. Sometimes it's just too easy to jump on the turbo rather than dig through the wardrobe for the mm -hmm. winter gear. But yes, contrary to what some of my mates might say, I'm not completely a fair weather cyclist. It's definitely noticeable that rim brakes don't work so well in the wet conditions, and this is because water on the road quickly gets transferred to your wheel rims while you're riding. Water on any braking surface reduces friction and affects performance. The coefficient of friction with normal brake pads and an aluminium braking surface doesn't drop as radically as it does with steel, but it is still significant. In fairness, disc brakes are affected by wet conditions too, albeit not as badly. They're fixed down at your hubs, uh, so disc brake rotors are further from the road surface than your rims, and so they don't get covered in as much spray or mud. The use of carbon fibre has allowed manufacturers to make lightweight and aero rims, but as both of us know, this doesn't always result in the best braking surface. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of variation in braking performance of carbon wheel sets that I've used. And of course, there are also some considerations to take into account with carbon braking surfaces, having to use carbon wheel uh, specific brake pads, for example. Many manufacturers will also tell you that you need to use their own brand brake pads. Uh, we got chatting to Canyon and they said that carbon brake pads usually wear out faster than conventional brake pads. In addition, the rims have weaker braking performance than aluminium rims, especially in wet conditions. That may well be true, but braking on carbon rims has got a lot better since the early days. It used to be dreadful. 
with little consistency, but manufacturers have gradually improved things. I think that's a really good point, actually. It was in the review of the new Hunt 36 UD carbon spoke wheel set that Jamie said how far carbon braking surfaces have come in the last decade and how these didn't snatch like older carbon wheel sets. Even now, though, it does take a rotation or two to clear off water when conditions are wet. Yeah, and Hunt actually now use what it calls a Griptech basalt ceramic fiber brake track to provide extra friction. Campag has its all conditions carbon control tech, which results in a textured braking surface and other brands have their own tech, all of which do lead to better braking, but it's still never as good as aluminium, which is never as good as disc brakes. One other issue with carbon that people sometimes mention is that heat produced by braking could cause the resin to soften, affecting the rim's structural integrity. I have to say, in the real world though, this virtually never happens, not even to heavy riders dis uh, descending steep mountains in high temperatures. Considering that they weigh just a few grams each and wear out pretty quickly, brake pads can be expensive. A pair of Zips Tangente Platinum Pro Evo brake pads retail at £41, for example, and you're going to need two pairs. Yeah, it's not exactly the most exciting purchase <laughs> either, is it? You need to select the right brake pads too. I know we said it earlier, but it really is important that you get the right pads for the rim material, isn't it? Uh, not only that though, some brands suggest that particular pads will work best with their wheels, and there's also different types of pads to suit different conditions. There are quite a few variables to consider, but on a basic level, I guess the softer compound pads will offer greater modulation and are best used during the dry summer months and harder pads for year-round riding. Yeah, so the softer summer pads won't deteriorate the rim's braking surface as much as they'll deteriorate themselves, basically. Uh, but firmer compounds will cause more wear on the braking track over time. So it is a balance, really. Stones, glass and other debris from the road can sometimes get embedded in the compound of your brake pads. If you don't notice it, this can damage the rim by gouging the braking surface. This obviously isn't very good at all and will affect the braking performance. So when using rim brakes, it really is important to regularly remove the wheels to get a proper look at the surface of the brake pad. If you do spot anything stuck in there, you need to prise it out with tweezers or a sharp pick. While disc brake development continues at pace, there's not really a lot happening in the rim brake market. Yeah, I have noticed this. We're getting very few rim brake wheel sets in to test, for example, simply because there's not many being released. Many high-end wheels are released only for use with disc brakes these days. Um, there's no such thing as a rim brake version of the Rovell Rapide CLX or Zip 353 NSW. Uh, just two examples there. Designers often say they like the fact that they don't need to incorporate a brake track into a new aero wheel because it gives them freer rein in their efforts to reduce drag. Of course, plenty of high-end wheels are still released in both rim brake and disc brake formats, but the market is clearly moving in one direction. Another factor is the width of the tyres that you can run. With disc brakes, your maximum tyre size is dictated by your frame and fork, but with rim brakes, you have the additional limitation of the caliper. Most modern rim brake calipers take a maximum tyre width of 28 millimetres. So all road and gravel riding aren't really open to you. People often moan about disc brakes making loads and loads of noise, uh, but rim brakes can rub and squeal too. Yeah, absolutely. I was at a local crit the other day. It was raining. Some of the noises going into the corners were absolutely horrendous. Luckily, it's usually easy to stop the brake pads from rubbing on the rims by recentering the caliper or altering the cable tension via the barrel adjuster, and many noises can be cured with simple maintenance like towing in the pads. 
A rim going slightly out of true during a ride isn't a big deal if you're using disc brakes. You might not even notice for a while. Absolutely. I've had a spoke go and, you know, it was absolutely fine. It wasn't perfect, but it was fine. You'll notice pretty quickly with rim brakes, though, uh, braking will become inconsistent as the contact between the rim and the pad varies during the wheel's rotation. And if your wheel goes a long way out of true, you might get a knocking between the rim and the pad, even when you're not braking, and that's really bad news. Do you cable your own bikes, Liam? Yeah, just done my TT bike, uh, but it does sometimes, and in fact, my TT bike took a few attempts to get it set up just so. Well, let me tell you, cable run makes a big difference to the performance of any cable operated brakes, which includes some disc brakes as well as the vast majority of rim brakes. This is because the steel cables don't like sharp corners, which is a problem if you want fully internal cable routing with nothing showing anywhere between the lever and the caliper. I have to say that I've found the more convoluted the routing, like the spongier the brakes feel at the lever. Hydraulic brakes, which does include some rim brakes, but not many, don't care much about tight turns. You want to run the hose inside the handlebar, take a hard left into the stem, flip directly down into the fork steerer and so on. Not a problem. Yeah, everyone does seem to want the clean look and slight aero benefit of internal cable routing these days. I have to say, myself included. Uh, this is possible with rim brakes and traditional cables though. Uh, the Trek Madone 9 series that we reviewed a few years ago had virtually no cable showing, um, but it has to be said that this is far, far easier to achieve with hydraulic brakes. Well, there you have it. The stuff they never tell you about rim brakes. There's certainly pros and cons to whichever braking system you choose. And if you'd like to read about some of the pitfalls of disc brakes now, then head over to the Road CC website. In the meantime, if you found this video useful, then like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.